join kids hat family it was miss pine's last day at school today yes i'm going to miss her too she was very nice yes and she gave all of us from class little souvenirs to remember her by really wow what did you get that's the thing she gave everyone toys or fancy stationery all she gave me was this empty diary so what's wrong with it what will i do with a diary all the kids were showing me their lovely gifts and i felt so bad i think you need to know about the miller's son who got a cat from the miller Once upon a time there lived a miller who had 3 sons. When the miller was dying, he left his mill to his eldest son, his donkey to his second son. And for the youngest son, he left his pet cat. The two elder brothers could use the mill and the donkey for trade and earning money. But the cat had no use for them. So they kicked the youngest brother and his cat out of their home. One day when the third son was sitting with his cat the cat said to him Master don't worry everything will be fine how will that be Can you get me a pair of shoes and a bag I have very little money left but I have never seen a talking cat before so I trust you And so the master bought the cat, the boots and the bag. The cat happily took it and went into the nearby forest. There he found a rabbit hole. He put the bag to the mouth of the hole. As soon as the rabbit came out, he got caught in the bag. The cat quickly tied its mouth and took it to the master. Master, I have brought you a rabbit for dinner. Let me cook it for you. The cat quickly cooked delicious dinner for his master. Once they were done, he went back to the rabbit hole. There he caught one more rabbit. He took this rabbit to the king's palace. Your Majesty, my Lord Marquis of Caraba has sent you a gift. Thank you, Puss, and thank the Marquis for me. The cat continued to do this for many days. One day, it heard about a nasty ogre 
that everyone was scared of. The cat went to meet him. Hello. What are you doing here? Oh, I just came to see why everyone is scared of you. I don't see any reason. Don't you know who I am? I can kill you right now. I don't think so. You don't really have the power. I have the power to take any shape I want. I can become a lion and strike you. Ha <laughs> ha! I am not scared of lions. I am only scared of rabbits. Well, here it goes then. As soon as the ogre turned himself into a rabbit, the cat pounced on him and killed him. The next day he requested his master, Master, please go and bathe in the lake outside the forest. I request you. The master agreed. As he was taking a bath, the cat stole the master's clothes and hid them. Then he ran to the highway and waited for any carriage to pass. As soon as he saw the king's carriage pass, he called out, Help! Your Majesty, my master is in the lake, but someone stole his clothes. I don't want him to catch a cold. Please help! The king recognized the cat who had been bringing his master's gifts to him every day and stopped immediately. He sent his man to retrieve some clothes from the castle and took them to the master. They gave the clothes to the third son who looked very handsome in them. Ride with my daughter and me, Marquis of Caraba. We will take you to your place of stay. Thank you, my lord. The cat sat in front with the driver while his master sat with the king and his daughter in the back. He showed the driver the way to the ogre's castle and told him to take them there. Once they had reached, the cat got down and opened the door of the carriage. We are home, master. Uh, yes, dear puss. Thank you. The king was impressed by the third son's humility and manners. He decided to get his daughter married to him. The young couple happily agreed. And they lived happily ever after. So the cat that everybody thought was of no use was extremely useful and changed everything for the third son. Exactly, Tofu. I am going to keep this diary close to me always and use it to write great stories. I am happy for you. Good night, Tofu. Once upon a time, there lived a lonely couple who only wished to have a child. They lived in a little house all on their own. 
At the back of the house, there was a small little window from which a splendid garden could be seen. This garden was full of very beautiful flowers and herbs. No one dared to enter the garden as it belonged to a witch named Dame Gothel. One day, the woman saw a plant called Rampion which is used to make salads. Dear husband, I have a strong desire to have a salad made out of that plant. Oh, but that belongs to the wicked witch. Oh, please do something. I really want to eat those rampions. Okay, dear. I will try to get it for you. At midnight, the husband climbed the wall into the garden of the witch. and started taking some rampions. The man took the rampion and his wife made a salad out of it and ate it. But the very same night there was a knock on the door and the man knew something was wrong. How dare you, you men! Come into my garden and steal my rampions like a thief. You will suffer for it. Oh, please forgive me. My wife saw your rampions from the window and she wanted it so bad that I could not say no to her. Oh, if that's the truth, then I will let you have as many rampions as your wife wants, but only on one condition. What is that condition? You must give me the child which your wife will bring into this world. The man in his terror consented to everything. As time passed by, the couple gave birth to a beautiful little baby girl. But that very same night, the witch came to their door and took away the baby girl, leaving the poor parents in complete sorrow. You are such a beautiful looking girl. I will name you Rapunzel and take care of you. Ha 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 ha! The witch kept her locked in a tower with no doors and stairs, but just a small little window. As the time passed by, Rapunzel grew into a beautiful girl with very long golden locks. But her beauty went in vain because the cruel witch never allowed her to go anywhere. Sad Rapunzel just used to stand at the little window and sing sad songs. When the witch had to visit Rapunzel, she used to ask Rapunzel to let down her hair. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. One day, when Rapunzel was standing at the window singing sad songs, a very handsome prince was passing by. He stopped and looked here and there to see where this beautiful voice was coming from. Oh, what a beautiful song! Who is singing so beautifully? The prince noticed the beautiful voice coming from the tower. He wanted to climb the tower and looked for the door, but could not find one. He went back home in dismay. But Rapunzel's singing had touched his heart so much that every day 
he started going to the forest to listen to Rapunzel's song. One day, he was standing behind the tree when he saw the witch coming. And he heard what she said. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. Then Rapunzel let down her long beautiful hair. And the witch climbed up the tower. Oh, that's the way to climb up to the tower. I shall do the same. The next day, when it began to grow dark, he went to the tower. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let your hair down to me. Immediately the hair fell down and the prince climbed up. Oh, who are you? Oh Lord, you are the most beautiful maiden that I have ever seen in my life. I have lost my heart to you. Will you marry me? Will you be my wife and live with me in my kingdom? Oh my prince, I wish that was possible. But the witch won't let me go out of this tower. And if she comes to know about you, she will kill you. I don't care. You are coming with me now. Come on, let's go. Oh Prince, I am ready to go away with you. But I do not know how to get down. If I let down my hair, then how will I get down? You are right. Mm. You have to go now. The witch will come soon. Yes, don't worry Rapunzel. I will think of something and come back tomorrow. That moment, when the prince was climbing down the tower, the witch saw him. Oh, so he wants to take Rapunzel away. They both will have to pay for this. The witch climbed the tower after asking Rapunzel to let down her hair. You treacherous girl! How could you even think of betraying me? You shall pay for this. The witch took a big pair of scissors and chopped off her long beautiful tresses. Rapunzel was left all alone in the desert by the witch to live in grief and misery. Meanwhile, the prince returned the next evening to take Rapunzel away. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. The wicked witch let down the long braid that she had chopped off from Rapunzel's hair and the prince climbed the tower without knowing what danger was awaiting him. When the prince was about to enter the window, the wicked witch chopped off the braid just to see the prince fall off the tower into the thorny bushes under the tower. The prince started bleeding from his eyes as the thorns blinded him completely. <laughs> the witch cast a spell on the prince and he wandered in woods around the world without any sight and survived in poor conditions. Meanwhile, the prince roamed about in misery for two years and finally he got to the desert where Rapunzel was left by the witch. La, la, la. He suddenly heard the beautiful sad voice of his beloved and started shouting in excitement. That voice! That voice! Is it you, Rapunzel? Is it really you? He went towards it 
and when he approached Rapunzel said Oh prince you finally found me I missed you so much I am so happy to see you that I can't stop crying Two of her tears fell on his eyes and they grew clear again and he could see with them as before I can see again Oh my sweet Rapunzel what have they done to us Let's go back to my kingdom He took her to his kingdom After a year Rapunzel gave birth to a pretty little baby girl who looked just like her and they lived happily ever after Get up Tofu Or you'll get late for school Get up Tofu Hmm Ha Ha You <laughs> What happened That That was <laughs> Yeah yeah I know I know That was me in your dream Now get up and get ready Tofu, do you want to come with me? I just saw my piggy bank has enough money to buy new books and toys for the children at the orphanage. You can help me buy and distribute the goodies. You are going to give away all your savings to other children? How can you do that? Don't you want to buy something for yourself? Tofu, we can't always think of ourselves. Sometimes we have to help those who do not have the same means as us. Let me tell you a story of kindness. This is a story from a long long time ago in Nottingham, England, when Prince Richard ruled the country. His younger brother, Prince John, was a wicked prince who took care of the state while the king was away for wars. Prince John was unkind to common people of Nottingham. and had no consideration for the poor under his charge the rich became richer while the poor became poorer the poor had no savior to save them other than robin hood or the hooded thief as he was popularly known Robin Hood had a trusted companion called Little John Robin Hood would rob the rich merchants. And the princess caravans that carried the huge taxes collected from the poor as they crossed the Sherwood Forest which was the home of Robin Hood on the way to the princess treasury. and he would distribute the loot amongst the poor his generosity earned him the name prince of thieves amongst the common people and also many rewards that were announced by the sheriff for his capture
But this did not stop Robin from doing his good deeds. One day, when Robin Hood and his friends had robbed the prince's caravan again, the prince called the sheriff of Nottingham to the palace. This is the last time Robin Hood has humiliated my men and me, sheriff. What are your troops doing? Why haven't they caught that thief as yet? We are doing everything, your highness. I assure you, we will have him soon. You should, otherwise someone else will be punished. The sheriff made a new plan with his men. He decided to announce an archery competition to be held in Nottingham and the winner would be announced as the best archer in Nottingham and also win a kiss from the maiden Marian. One day, Robin Hood's friend Tuck came to visit him. Have you heard of the archery competition that the sheriff has announced for tomorrow? Yes, we have, Friar. And the men and I think Robin shouldn't go to it. It is a trap laid by the sheriff. All of England knows that Robin Hood is the best archer by far. Robin doesn't need to go and prove anything there. You worry too much, little John. Lighten up. We will go and have some fun tomorrow. And to ensure that no one recognizes us, we'll wear disguises. And so the next day, Robin Hood and his friends wore disguises and went to the competition. Just as Robin Hood had predicted, no one was able to recognize him. Soon it was Robin Hood's turn to shoot the arrows. He took the first shot at the board and hit Bullseye. The crowd cheered for this unknown archer. Then he took another arrow and shot it again. This one too hit Bullseye. The crowd cheered louder. The cheering caught the sheriff's attention and he turned to see what the matter was. By now, Robin had drawn his third arrow and took a shot. It too hit the bull's eye. When the fourth arrow also did the same, the sheriff realized something. That is no stranger. That is Robin Hood. No one can shoot four arrows in a row like that. Grab him, men! The whole crowd broke into a frenzy as the sheriff's men arrested Robin Hood. Off with his head! But little John moved like a lightning flash and grabbed the prince and put a knife to his throat. Release him immediately! The sheriff's men had no choice except to let go of Robin Hood. The Prince of Thieves and his friends hollered and made their way out of the archery field. But not before Robin Hood climbed the audience tower and stole a kiss from the maiden Marian. Back 
at the Sherwood Forest, Robin Hood and his friends got together and celebrated. You were right, Robin Hood. Today was a lot of fun. The sheriff had this coming. I am sure you surprised Maiden Marian too. Well, not as surprised as the prince is going to be when he finds out that we stole four bags of gold from his treasury during the sheriff's archery competition. Everybody laughed heartily. Wow, Tia! This is such an inspirational story about being selfless and helping the helpless. I am going to change my ways from now onwards. I am so proud of you, Tofu. That is such a great decision. Keep doing good deeds. Hey, Tia. What are you doing? I'm meeting the new school principal tomorrow, so just putting my things in order. Oh, you want to impress him, is it? I'm not sure about that, but I don't want to disappoint him either. Maybe you should tell him that you're the best in class. And also tell him that you're a champion swimmer and always come first in all the sports activities and that you always win all the debates and elocutions Tofu, I can't do that not all of that is true yes, but most of it is oh boy, you're acting like the miller the miller? who is that? Come, let me tell you a story. Rumpelstiltskin Once upon a time, the king called the village miller to the court. The miller went there with a mind to impress the king by any means possible. And so when he was presented in front of the king, he lied that his daughter, who was an excellent spinner, could spin gold from straw. Oh, that's impressive. I order you to bring her to the castle tomorrow and she will spin gold for me. The miller goes back home and tells his daughter what he'd done. Oh no! What have you done, father? I cannot spin gold. I don't think anyone can. I know, and I am sorry, my child, but there is no way out of it now. You must go to the coat tomorrow and spin the best you can. Oh, uh, uh, yes, father. And so the girl went to the coat the next day. Your father tells me that you can spin gold out of straw. In that room, there is bale of straw. I give you till tomorrow morning. You must spin it into gold by then or you will lose your life. The miller's daughter had no choice but to do as told. She went into the room and locked herself in. As the night wore on, she didn't know what to do. There was no way she could spin gold. Afraid 
that her father's lie would get her punished by the king, she started crying. Just then, a strange little man appeared in the room. I know what bothers you. <laughs> Do you? Yes, and I can help you. I can spin the straw into gold for you. Oh, oh please do it then. I beg of you. What will you give me in return? Uh, I can give you this necklace of mine. Okay, I will spin for you. And so the little man got to the spinning wheel and started spinning. Within an hour he had converted all the straw into gold. He then took the necklace from the miller's daughter and went out of the window. The next morning, the king came into the room. Is my gold ready? Yes, your majesty. Very good. Now I have another test for you. The castle's barn is full of straw. You will spin all that straw into gold till tomorrow morning. The miller's daughter was taken to the barn. Once alone, she was again surrounded by worries. She didn't know what to do. Soon it was night. Afraid of the king's reaction, she started crying. <laughs> You've got a barn full of straw for yourself today. The girl looked up to see the strange man from the night before. Yes! And the king needs it to be spun into gold by tomorrow morning. Hmm. What will you give me in exchange for it now? Uh, I don't have much, but I can, I can give you this ring off my finger. The man took the ring from her and started spinning the straw into gold. The next morning, when the king saw the shining gold, his greed increased. Very well, the castle has yet another barn, bigger than this one. If you value your life, you will spin all the straw in it into gold by tomorrow morning. If you succeed, I will marry you and make you the queen. And if you fail, off with your head, I'll have. Once again, the king had left. The girl was taken into another barn. It was bigger than any room that the girl had ever seen and so full of straws. 
She broke down as soon as the king's men had left. She knew she was surely doomed now. When night fell, the little man appeared again. Need my help again, is it? Yes, please. Please spin the straw into gold and save me. Well, I could do that. But what will you give me now? I have nothing left to give you now. You could give it to me when you have it. Yes, I will. Tell me, what can I give you? Your first born child. The girl gasped, but thought, who knows what may happen in the future? It was wiser to save her present. So she agreed. Okay, I will give you my first born child. The strange man happily got to spinning the straw. When the king came in the next morning, the whole barn was full of glistening gold. Happy, he announced his marriage with the miller's daughter. Soon a year passed and the new queen gave birth to a baby boy. The boy was only a day old when the strange little man appeared in her room once again. It is time to settle your debt. The boy is mine. Oh no! Can't you forget this debt? Never! Please! There has to be some way! I will give you gold, fortunes, whatever you want. I only want the boy. But I will give you three days to guess my name. If at the end of the third day you can guess it right, I will leave you and this boy alone. If you can't, the boy will be mine. As soon as the man had left her room, the queen called her trusted soldier and ordered him to gather every name he can find in the kingdom. The soldier set on his mission immediately. The next evening, he came and gave the queen a list of names. When night fell, the little man visited the queen again. Do you know my name? Uh, is it James? Or Jack? Well, is it Richard? Or Kenny? She continued with all the names she knew and the names that the soldier had brought back from the village. No, no, no! These are not my names. But the little man said no to every name. That is not my name. I leave you now with two days left to find what it is. The queen sent her man out yet again to go to the farthest corners of the kingdom. Till then she read all the books she could find 
hoping that one of them might give her the man's name. The next night when the man came back, she gave him the names her soldier had brought back and the ones she had collected from the books. Uh, is your name Casper? Sheepshanks? Tommen? None of them. I leave you again. I will come back tomorrow to take away the boy. Because you won't be able to guess my name. Once again, the queen implored the soldier to go out in the kingdom and find her a name. The next evening, before the little man would come, the soldier returned to the queen with some news. My lady, alas, I could not find any new names in the kingdom and its neighbours. However, last night, after I left the castle, I came upon a clearing in the forest where I saw a strange little man danced around the fire. He sang a strange song too. She can search the land, she can search the sky, but a name like mine she will never come by. Rumpelstiltskin, that's me. The moment the queen heard the name, she knew it was the one. She happily waited for the strange man to come visit her. Have you found my name yet? Oh no! I can only wonder what it can be. Is it Apple Tree? Myrel? Or maybe Rumpelstiltskin? How can that be? This is some sort of sorcery. How did you know my name? The moment the strange man heard his name, he became very angry. He shouted and stomped around the room. In his anger, he stomped so hard that there became a big hole in the ground and he fell into it towards his death. I wonder if the queen ever told her father about all this. We will never know, but we do know that trying to impress people may get us into big trouble. Oh yes, that lesson I've learned today. And I don't think I will ever forget it. Thanks, Tia, for this wonderful story. Tia, I think we will take long to reach. Can you please tell me some interesting story? Why not, Tofu? Let me tell you a story about a princess and a bad fairy. Sleeping Beauty A long time ago, there lived a king and a queen. They wished for a child for a very long time. After a long, long wait, their wish came true. A beautiful girl was born to the king and queen. The king announced to his people, We are blessed with a baby princess and her name is Sunshine. 
said the people. As the baby girl turned one, celebrations began all around. A big party had to be planned. We must invite all the fairies. Yes, we must call them all. But not the black fairy. She is mean. She is bad. The party was a lot of fun. The baby princess looked lovely. All fairies brought with them some precious gifts and blessed the little princess to be a clever and kind girl. Suddenly, the castle was filled with blue smoke and nobody could see anything. As soon as the blue smoke settled, king and queen were shocked to see the black fairy. She saw that a beautiful celebration was organized and everyone from the kingdom was invited for the feast, including all fairies. She became very angry for not being invited and that's why she cursed the baby princess. On your 16th birthday, before the sun sets, you'll prick on a spindle and die. She screamed in anger and vanished. Everybody was shocked. Suddenly, a young fairy who had not yet given her blessings to the little princess said, I can't take away the black fairy's curse, but I'll definitely try to help. When the princess pricks herself, she won't die. Instead, she'll go into a deep sleep and shall only awaken with a kiss from a prince who loves her. After this, the king ordered to destroy all spindles and needles from the kingdom. Soon, there were no sharp things in the castle. Except for one, they didn't check in the tower. As years passed by, the baby grew under supervision of fairies and turned out to be a very beautiful young girl. When she turned 16, while roaming in the castle one day, she saw a magical light ball. and followed the light ball. Which took her to the top of the tower in the castle. Inside, there was an old woman bent over a spinning wheel. Come here. You must try spinning this wheel. Oh, what is this? Please let me do it as well. I have never tried this. 
But the minute she touched the needle of the spindle, she fell to the ground. Black Fairy's curse had come true. Old woman, who was actually the Black Fairy, laughed and laughed and then disappeared. The king who remembered the words of the last fairy made her daughter, the princess, to lie in a room for many years to come. Fairies saw the princess sleeping and everyone thought that she was extremely beautiful. They all said at once, Sleeping Beauty. Soon this name became popular in town and everyone started to mention Princess as the Sleeping Beauty. The whole kingdom was sad. Fairies noticed this and decided let the whole kingdom fall asleep. So when the princess wakes up by her prince, she wouldn't be alone. Everyone in the kingdom fell asleep. The king, the queen, the servants, soldiers, everyone in town fell asleep. Even all the animals fell asleep. Everything in the kingdom stopped. Soon, a thick forest grew around the castle and hid it. About hundreds of years later, a handsome prince was riding through the forest. He saw the strange looking castle. The accompanying soldiers told the prince that this is the castle of the Sleeping Beauty. He had heard stories of Sleeping Beauty and started to explore it. He was surprised to see everybody in the castle sleeping. When he entered more, he saw even the king and queen were sleeping. He looked around and saw one big pink door. He tried to open the door, but it was difficult to open as it was closed for so many years. After trying hard, he managed to open the door and to his surprise, he found Sleeping Beauty lying on a beautiful bed in that room. The moment he saw her, he just fell in love with her. I really want to know who this beautiful girl is. She looks so, so gentle and peaceful, he said. He leaned down and kissed her. Instantly, the kiss lifted the spell and the princess woke up. The king, queen and all the people and animals in the kingdom were awake again. The kingdom was full of joy and there were celebrations all around. The prince and the princess soon got married and lived happily ever after. Wow! It means 
No matter if bad people think bad for you, there are always some well wishers to help you out. Bye, Melly. I will call you later. Hey, Tofu. How was your day? Oh, it was such a fun day, Tia. You know that new boy who has joined my class, Kate? Yes. The one whom all the teachers like so much? Well, not anymore. They don't. What do you mean, Tofu? Some of us got together and got her into real trouble with the teachers. The teachers think it was all her fault. Tofu, that's horrible. How could you? Relax, Tia. No one will ever know. I am very disappointed with you, Tofu. But you know what? Evil can never win. What are you talking about, Tia? Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Once upon a time, there lived a king with his wife. Sadly, they had no children. This made the queen very sad. On a winter day, when it was snowing heavily, the queen sat in her garden and prayed with all her heart to have a daughter as beautiful as the winter, fair as snow and with lips as red as the last red rose that bloomed in the garden. Her prayers were answered a year later when she gave birth to a daughter just as she wanted. But the childbirth was so difficult for the queen that she died during it. Leaving behind the king and their daughter Snow White. As time passed, the princess started asking for her mother. Father, where is mother? Why don't I have a mother? Soon you will have one, my princess. The word spread in the kingdom that the king had decided to remarry. Families who had daughters of marriageable age started trying to impress the king, but no maiden could win his heart. Till one day, an enchanting woman showed up alone at the palace. The king fell in love with her immediately and they were married soon. My queen, this whole palace is yours. It is your own home. Go where you like. Ask for whatever you want. Thank you, kind king. But all I need is a room to store my mirror that I have brought with me. Yes, I noticed that all you have brought is that large round mirror. I am happy as long as you are happy, dear. Oh, you know what will make me truly happy? What is it? Your death. The queen was actually an evil witch who had pretended to be nice so that the king would marry her. Her true motive was to have a kingdom of her own. She had only one other desire to be the fairest woman in the world.
every day she would stand in front of her mirror which had magical powers and ask it the same question Mirror mirror on the wall who's the fairest of them all It is you O oh queen This went on for many years. The queen ruled the kingdom without any real love for its people. The people suffered under her reign, but no one dared say anything because they knew that the queen was a witch. The princess Snow White also had a similar fate. The queen did not even bother to look at her even once and left her alone and lonely till it was Snow White's 16th birthday Mirror mirror on the wall who is the fairest of the mall Snow White No how dare you say that I do not lie queen She must die. She must die. God, come in. One of her most trusted guards came in. Take Snow White and kill her now. But my queen, she is just a child. Do as you are told. Yes, my queen. Afraid of the queen's anger, the guard took Snow White deep into the jungle to kill her. But as he raised his sword to kill her, he looked into her blue eyes and lost his courage to strike. He just left her there and ran. Lost, Snow White wandered deeper into the jungle. There She came across a tiny cottage. She decided to enter it. Look at this tiny home. I wonder who lives here. She saw seven tiny beds. a dining table with seven small chairs and a kitchen which had seven plates and tumblers there is seven of everything here i think seven people live here but why is everything so small and tiny snow white was just looking around when seven dwarfs entered the house it was their home Who are you? Oh, hello. I didn't hear you come in. My name is Snow White. I am the princess. The princess? We saw a royal guard kill a roe deer and pull its heart out. Yes, and he was mumbling to himself that he will tell the queen that he had killed the princess and brought her heart for the queen. Yes. The queen's guard brought me here. I think he wanted to kill me, but ran away, leaving me alone. Don't worry, princess. You can stay here with us. That way, you will be safe. Oh, thank you so much. Snow White started staying with the dwarf brothers. In the day, They would go out into the jungle to hunt and earn money. While Snow White would stay home and cook for them and take care of their house. They all lived happily together. Mm. 
mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Snow White. You are lying to me because I didn't visit you since you said this the last time. I cannot lie when you ask me something. But Snow White is dead. Snow White is alive. Your God lied to you. That God will die and so will Snow White. Using her magic, the Queen disguised herself as an old woman. She even made the mirror tell her where Snow White lived now. As she entered into the jungle, she saw Snow White filling a jar with water from a stream. I am very thirsty. Please give me some water. Yes, yes. Here, please. Have as much as you want. Dear girl, please take this apple as a thank you from me. The apple looked so beautiful and tempting that Snow White just couldn't say no to it. She took it from the old woman, but she didn't know that the queen had poisoned the apple. As soon as she took one bite of the apple, the poison affected her. She fell down, stopped breathing and had no heartbeat. The queen became very happy and rejoiced as she made her way back to the castle. But she was too distracted by her joy and fell into quicksand. With no one to help, she sank and died. Meanwhile, the dwarfs came home and saw Snow White lying there dead. They were heartbroken. Who did that to her? I think the queen found out about her. Look at that black half-eaten apple. I don't want to let go of her. Let us keep her in a glass box. And so the dwarfs kept her in the glass box in the garden near their home. Every day they would keep a red rose on her box. One day, a young prince came into the forest. There, he saw the seven dwarfs sitting by Snow White. He got down from his horse and went to see. His eyes fell on Snow White who was in the box. Who is she? What has happened to her? When the dwarfs had finished telling him everything, the prince was sad too. I am in love with her. I wish I had a chance to meet her once. Now all I want to do is kiss her. And so the prince lifted the lid of the glass box and kissed Snow White. As soon as he kissed her, Snow White opened her eyes. The curse of the poisoned apple had been broken. My princess, you are alive. Your love woke me up, dear prince. Encouraged by the prince's support, Snow White decided to go back to her kingdom and face the queen. When she reached there, she found out that the queen was dead and the kingdom was joyous to have the princess back. Yeah. 
Snow White took over the throne with the prince by her side and even invited the dwarfs to come in the castle and stay with them. With her return, the kingdom was joyous once again. Tia, can you please take me to Kate's house? I have to apologize to her right away. I think I have been evil to her. Good decision, Tofu. Yes, I will take you there. Come on, let's go. Thanks, Tia. And I promise, tomorrow I will tell the teachers the truth too. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.